that are recorded as well. So continuing from uh, different uh, uh, machine learning algorithms, also um, K-means clustering is actually one of the most popular and easy to use um, unsupervised machine learning. So we've mostly been using um, supervised learning or have been looking at various supervised um, learning algorithms, right? And um, you can say um, clustering is often used um, for things like um, market segmentation, basically looking at um, customers uh, buying features in order to align yourself with um, what your customers really need in the market. Um, so you find a lot of companies using it in that way as well. Things like social network analysis um, to search results of um, groupings, medical imagery, and things like um, detecting anomaly in things. So remember when we said, where you have really large data set and you, um, the data set is complex in nature. So you, you don't really have a lot of time to do your labeling yourself. It's complex to do the labeling of the features in order to feed your training um, data set or label training data set into your model. You go for unsupervised learning, right? So we will be looking at um, K-means clustering. Uh, we'll, if we do manage to find the time today, we will look at how to choose the right number of clusters. Um, we we'll, may actually touch on the strengths and weaknesses of K-means um, clustering as well. So the whole idea is basically look at the data that you have, identify patterns in the data in order to find some commonalities um, to do some groupings for you. So you're thinking more around segregation or segmentation kind of thing. So basically grouping like for like um, based on the patterns that you will find in the data. So clustering is basically an approach in machine learning that is used to categorize, so can write categorize down or basically to segment the data into subgroups. So you have various subgroups that you are working on. And that is actually based on similarity, or we say based on looking at patterns, right? And these subgroups, we simply call them clusters, right? So it's just basically clustering, but cutting off the ING and putting them there. Or you see each of the subgroup is just a cluster. So if we come back to our map, we have spent some time to go into the classical or the most common algorithms. We've done our branch, we've done our binary, we've done our multi, and we have also did some groupings and we've looked at decision tree logistic, we've looked at Bayes, um, naive base as well, Bayesian, we have called, um, K, we've looked at KNN as well. We've said it's a lazy learning. We have looked at um, linear regression. Sorry, I realized I started talking a bit fast. So I'll slow myself down now and hopefully we can continue from that as well. So then we come back um, to um, the common algorithms and we just want to take a slight um, turn into um, unsupervised learning. So unsupervised learning, of course, there are other um, options, but we want to go in clustering where we have said we are trying to find patterns to group like for like. And within the clustering, we've got various algorithms, but we want to look at k-means for now, yeah? Can I check but I can hear me loud and clear so we keep going? You can go ahead. Okay. So basically it is an unsupervised learning and we'll talk a bit about clustering. So at least we can um, then take the step further to look at k means as well. So there are two um, primary goals to clustering. And the first goal is to basically ensure that the item within a particular cluster um, has a very high similarity. Uh, you have items within the same cluster having high, as much high similarities as possible. Yeah. So that's the within the cluster, intra cluster. And also the second goal is to make sure that um, the items within one cluster are as different um, from the 
Start my machine first for a second. Oops, we're back. They're as different from the other, other clusters as possible. Group life alike, basically, and of course, um, the ones that do not belong to the same group just go into a different one. So the, we call that low interclass similarity, and then we have the within, you have high intraclass um, similarity. And clustering is actually um, widely used in machine learning approach. Um, it is sometimes used um, in the domain of, the, um, let's say, network security. So um, if you want to identify things like DDoS attack and other things, so basically to detect anomalies and behavior on um, the network, it's of course not coming with um, available data. And again, you can use um, clustering to automatically um, categorize documents as well. So you have documents based on their similarity. So it's just things like filing, the filing system. Um, another common use of clustering is to uh, segment customers, as we talked about earlier, like market segmentation uh, for segmenting purposes, um, to illustrate um, things like use case. Um, let's look at um, an example, right? So let's assume that we work for a small credit you know, company or bank or you know, loan app right, that we can actually use. And we say that um, we have um, some data so we have this particular data that we'll be using. And uh, for this particular data, we are saying that uh, we have the objective is to use the data that we could uh, to group our customers um, based on their spending score. So we find um, the spending score and um, income le level. Let's choose these two. So we want to find... <laughs> Which of our customers spend more uh, or less um, based and then based on and also look at how much they earn as well to see if we can see some particular correlation between them, right? So we will plan to use a scale of low to high for both of these two variables that we have highlighted, right? So we can represent them in a two dimensional plane. Um, so we pick the two we highlighted, represent them in a two dimensional plane such as this one. So basically we've got um, low income and then we have um, not showing clearly. So let me write it there. We have low income and low income on the um, X axis as well. Um, of course, labeled income on the X axis and then we have the high income on them. Then again, they'll map to the spending and we have low spending and then we have high spending on the right axis. So too high, you say. You notice someone like um, someone like this gentleman and uh, spends, um, is earning low, spends low as well, but someone like Frank on the top there has low income, but spends quite a lot. And we have Alan who earns more and then also spends, we've got Carol sitting somewhere in between with middle income, but also spending a bit more as well. So that's sort of our data distribution at this particular point in time. So let's try to say that with our clustering, we can we just want to start by grouping them together. So we take the lows and the lows, group them, put them in the same group or same segment or same cluster. And then we've got the low income, high um, high spending people, and then we've got high income, high um, spending on the as well. So basically we've sort of created three clusters. So I'll go and just say we're creating three. If we intended to create two, or uh, of course four, it would have been slightly different, but just slightly different distribution. So that we say, we just give them some labels or we segment them to say we, these are a theta group, a theta group or uh, well, alpha group or a theta group, just basically we just form clusters that we've given them um, names. So if we come back to our data, we have um, people who are belonging to the alpha, who I think the alpha was low income, high spending, and then we have the people who also have low income, um, low spending and high income, high spending. So I think that's flipped as well, but it depends on how we did um, the labeling on that side in terms of um, the segmentation, the name of the segments. 
But then all we've done so far is to look at two variables, then use the patterns within that variables to try to form our groups so we understand our customers better and hopefully maybe we can target them in a better way. And all we've done is to form clusters. We've not talked about k-means yet, just really understanding what clusters are and what options that we have. So simply selecting like for like and then grouping them together. And we say, what, what are some of the possible ways we can do our clustering? And that's what we are interested in looking at now. It's like the, the type of clusters that we may exist. Sorry, I'm getting some glitches on the side. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but if, if it becomes a bit too noisy, let me know. And of course, then we find a different way. So basically we say, um, what are some of the class, um, clusters that we can actually end up with? So we say we can have a hierarchical cluster, so similar to the way that AI um, relates to uh, machine learning. So in this particular case, you have clusters within cluster, right? So you go, you need to go through layer one to get to the innermost layer. So you've got one cluster whose boundaries are nested within another cluster, similar to something like nested in or nested loops and other things, right? Then we can have the partitional cluster, right? So with the partitional approach, you notice that the boundaries are non-overlapping. So either you belong there, or you belong there, or you belong there. So we don't have overlapping clusters in the partition. So basically just creating partitions and splitting them. Then we have the overlapping ones where you have clusters that fall within the boundary. You, you, know, you have some elements that fall within the boundaries of uh, more than one cluster. So with overlapping, you've got one that actually sits um, more in more than one cluster. And fuzzy, um, fuzzy approach is basically you not really sure whether it belongs to one or the other. So basically you have some that sits in there, but we use weights, the weight between zero and one to identify that we say, it's more likely that maybe this particular um, data will belong to cluster A based on the weight that we are giving it. So in this particular case, the closer the weight is to one, the higher chance that it will fall within a particular um, cluster or belongs to a particular cluster. So we have the chances of, let's say four falling within this um, cluster or another four falling within that cluster. So there's a high chance that this particular data point belongs to um, these two. Or then we have another data point, which says that um, we are 60% sure that it belongs to um, the red cluster on there. So basically we just use probabilities for the fuzzy. And you can use density base, which is more or less similar based on the weight of the item. So we say you have a higher weighting or higher chance that you belong to this cluster rather than, or rather than another cluster. So it's just basically weighting. And what we've talked about up to this point is the different kinds of clusters that we are likely to end up with. Are we okay up to this point? Yes, please. Okay. Right. So basically, we have simply said different types of clusters, and we want to use a particular, uh, we want to see a look at a particular machine learning algorithm, which is the K means. And we said earlier that sometimes it's confused with the K nearest neighbor. For K nearest neighbor, you're looking at your Cartesian plane, and um, you have data distribution. So you have data distributed. Is supervised learning, so we know sort of this data, we understand the existing data, and I'm talking about k-nearest neighbor at the moment, not to be confused with k-means. And then we said we had an unknown data, and if we pick our k for k from k and then to be, let's say, um, in this particular case, let's make it five again or six, we can say these data points are the closest. Again, it's frozen. Let me just give it a second and hopefully it'll come back. Yeah, these data points are the closest to the unknown data. So we just find, um, draw a circle around data, those data points. And we say there's a high, it depends on what kind of um, 
data falls within there, then we say high chance that it belongs there, it belongs there. So basically that is where we were at with um, KNA. But definitely we say that is not, we don't, we don't lose much. So we go back and I can clean this and start to um, record over it as well. So basically we said that's, that was KNN and 4K means we're saying we're doing clustering and it's unsupervised. So we have data scattered around that we want to identify from the patterns of the data and try to group them. So it means that we don't have um, pair labels um, that of the data that's spread for us. We're just looking at the data and trying to find um, patterns. But KNN is actually a partitional um, clustering approach, which means that the patterns, uh, the clusters that we will end up with, we won't have overlapping boundaries. So each item will belong to one cluster, for example, not more than one. You okay with me talking at this pace? Okay. You okay with me talking at this pace? <laughs> um, can you drop off? Can you go back, please? <laughs> Lost you. Yeah, I think I lost you for a second. So what we have mentioned, remember when we talked about the different clusters that we are likely to end up with? Where we have partitional fuzzy, um, depending on how the boundaries look like, right? KNN is unsupervised, K means is unsupervised uh, machine learning algorithm, which means it will take a look at the data that we've provided it and try to identify patterns. But the clusters it will create for us is a partitional um, clustering. So it's not going to have data falling within more than one cluster. Each data will belong to a particular different cluster. Does that make sense up to this point? Yes, please. Yes, please. So basically all it means that the boundaries are not overlapping and that's what we have. And then we also want to use, but what, but what, we, mean, what we mean by K means similar to when we say the, um, when we said the, uh, for K and then the K was the number that we used to draw the circle or to find the nearest neighbor. For K means that's also the K is the number that we will use to um, identify the number of clusters that we want to form, right? So we start off by specifying the K that we want. Let me cross this out so we don't um, confuse ourselves. We want to start off by specifying the number of Ks that we want or the number of clusters that we want to use. And that the algorithm will use a process called maximum or maximization. Testing my handwriting skills. Oh, yes, yes. Just bear with me for a second. Uh, maxim <laughs> maximization. That's the part. Sorry, someone said something. Um, no, sure. Was that a question for me? Or... Oh, no, we were saying. I can't see. Sorry. You can't see. Sorry, can you see? Is it maximum? Sorry, it's maximization, right? That is an I. <laughs> Play it on my handwriting. Maximization, maximum. Okay. Yeah? So this uh, let me clean part of it. Is, is that better? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As, if you can spell max, maximization, pretend Michael's handwriting is the best handwriting in the whole universe, right? And then, right, okay. right. You, you put me to the test, right? Yes. <laughs> so we've got the maximization. We simply add in one word. All right, so hopefully this one, I'm actually going to do my very best, right? So it is the way that what we are expecting, right? So we say expectation maximization. Come on, this is a lot better. That's a T, that's an A, that's I-O-N. <laughs> they say you can see this, it's a lot better. Yes, please. That's what I can never do, right? So it uses expectation maximization to assign every single item within the uh, data set 
to one and one one and only one k non-overlapping cluster. So expectation maximization. What is our expectation that a particular item will belong to a particular cluster? And then we use that to assign that cluster to that um, uh, that item to that cluster, and that's all the, the only place that particular item is going to exist. Is this okay? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, good. I probably shouldn't try writing on the screen. I should just say it and type or something like that. Right. So let's say we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, items, right? So we just want to illustrate how the k-means um, algorithms work or k-means clustering work. So it, we just take these 12 instances of items and we say we, they have two, they, they belong to these two features, feature A and then um, feature B, right? We don't necessarily have a label of them. So our goal is to partition this particular uh, this particular distribution or this particular data into a K belonging to a K of three, right? So we want to create our three partitions, right? Can you understand me? Can you hear me? Yes. So K of three means that we want to create three clusters or three partitions. So the first thing that we do or that the algorithm does is to um, choose a K at the case at random points, right? So you choose random points um, in the feature um, this particular space as the initial centers of the cluster. So a center, you think about it as a center of gravity, you know, yeah? if you have something that is sort of going to draw everything around it closer to it, just think about it that way, right? So if that is the, you, can, you call it centroid over time, but it means that it's going to draw everything around it. Sorry, for my... Yes, please ask. Yes, is the K uh, equal to three random or? No, so we, we say you, you, you decide that you want to create three clusters. So we, it's, a, it's our goal, right? The goal that we are setting. Okay. <laughs> if our goal is to create three clusters, it's like the breeds of dog. If let's say we had two breeds that we wanted. So if you want to create two, uh, identify two breeds, you're setting your K to two, right? And you're thinking, from the data, that's where it's going to fall within. But in this particular case, we want to create three clusters now. Later on, there are ways that you can actually, I don't think we'll cover that in this session, but there are ways that you can actually tell um, what is the right K, what is um, the right position, and all those kind of things. There are various techniques that we can use. But for now, let's just say, it's a, just an illustration. We want to see how it works, right? OK, so we. We understand up to the point of the concept of the centroid being something like center of gravity. Yes? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. So something like that. It's just Michael's way of uh, making it un understandable, saying the way that he understands it. Right. So basically, we randomly place these um, centroids within the plane. And these initial um, centers are represented by C1, C2, C3, um, as we can see here. So just know that these um, initial centers are randomly chosen, okay? It's just really random. They do not have to be one of the points um, from the original data. So it doesn't necessarily have to overlap with any of these existing um, points from the data, right? So after we choose the initial um, cluster centers, the algorithm would then um, assign each item to a center and um, what the way it would do that is quite similar to the way can get it right. So basically it, um, it will just use um, what the data points that are closest to the center. It's already frozen, so I'll let it breathe for a bit and hopefully it will continue. So just take the data points that are closest to that particular centroid to group them together. You know, the way gravity works, we are all trying to pull um, the data points closest to them. Um, so the closer you are probably, the stronger you are going to get pulled to that particular centroid, right? 
And that is the, the process that we call the expectation maximization phase, right? So to determine the clusters um, the, or to determine the cluster centers closest to a particular point, the K-means algorithm will calculate this again using Euclidean distance, like similar to what we did for um, KNN, right? Between each of the points and the center. And the way that Euclidean distance works, of course, you take the, if it's in the XY Cartesian plane, for example, you take the X of the data point, um, subtract that of the centroid from it, you find the square because you don't want a negative value and you do the same for the Y and then you find the square root of that. So just a bit of mass um, that we just simply throw in there. Some stuff that hopefully you're already familiar with. If not, that, that is not a problem. At least we have covered this one. Yeah, it's cool, right? Are we okay up to this point? Okay. Yes. So basically, it will take each point and, of course, plot it into um, the Euclidean distance, trying to um, calculate. In this particular case, we have a three and a four and a three and a two. So calculate that distance and then um, plug it in. Calculate the distance for you. You've got one point four one four. Um, it finds the minimum across all, of, it does try to do exactly the same for all the data points and the others. And then we realize that from that, I should probably do it this way. From that, these are closest to that. Uh, I didn't think it would, but say those are also closest to that. And then we have the yellow ones also created for us. Are we okay up to this point? Yes, please. Okay. So we sort of managed to set our initial clusters, basically just using the Euclidean distance to create um, some form of initial um, clustering for us, right? But then once it finishes that, we say we've created um, a groups, doesn't really necessarily settle there as well. We just keep calculating again until it finds the minimum distance to each of these centroids. And remember our goal is to, so just keep randomly placing them. Our goal is to make sure that each data point fall with one and one, one and one, only one, sorry, one and only one, why am I struggling to say that? One and only one cluster. So keep placing the centroids until you have the one that is most um, minimum distance away from each of these. And remember what we said, we want the data belonging to different clusters to be as far from the others as possible, which means we can set a goal to find a way that these two are also as far away from each other as possible. helping us to form the cluster based on the data that we have uh, looked at. Do we understand up to this point? Yes. If, if we understand up to this point, I'm actually happy to pause here. Um, there is a bit more on how to, how to identify the right K and everything like that. If people want, actually I'm more than happy to also do more or less an extended video that will cover those and then give it to you for you to watch in your optional as, a, as an option in your own time. Are we okay with that? Yes. yes. Can we watch it. Can we watch it. Is that a yes. Can you please repeat your question? My question is, will we watch the video if I make it? Because that 